Hey class, Mr. Long here. Um, we are going to go ahead and do a video lecture on an introduction to the Industrial Revolution. Now, for the last three days in class, we have been working on our web quest on the Industrial Revolution, and hopefully we have a good understanding of the Agricultural Revolution, which was uh, task one, and then um, the why Britain, which is task two. So why did the Industrial Revolution start in Great Britain or England? Um, that's that's the big question. So hopefully we've got enough information through the videos, through the different articles, through um, the graphs and the maps um, to fully understand uh, task one and two, but I'm gonna go into a brief overview. So anything that I have to um, say on this lecture, please, um, jot down on your notes that you guys have in front of you. Um, the lines that are to the right of each slide, uh, please use those to just make side notes um, on, on anything that I mention um, that isn't necessarily on the slide. So what I want you guys to do is for the next two slides, you guys are going to go ahead and answer these two questions. Uh, so for the first question that you see, uh, the question is asking, why do you think England is such a good place for trade? So just take a look at the map. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and then I want you to take a few minutes to answer this question. Now moving on to the next slide, here's our next question. And hopefully you guys have enough information from our web quest in task one and two um, to answer this. So the question is, why was England the first country to industrialize? So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for a second and let you guys answer this question. So getting into this lecture, guys, we first need to talk about the agricultural revolution before we really talk about the industrial revolution. Because if it wasn't for the agricultural revolution, um, the industrial revolution may not have never occurred. Um, so two words, agriculture and then revolution. Now, when I say agriculture, hopefully you guys are looking at the pictures on uh, this slide and you realize that agriculture has to do with farming, farmers, um, crops, harvesting crops, um, using the land and, and what's on the land to um, make stuff like food to, to help people out. But when I also when I mention agriculture, I want you to think of not just food, but I want you to think of animals because animals also has a lot to do with agriculture. Now, when I say the word revolution, we've talked about revolution before, the American Revolution, the French Revolution. When I say revolution, please think change. So there's some sort of change that happens in agriculture that will eventually lead to the Industrial Revolution. So a couple things about the agricultural revolution, and you guys definitely um, learned about this in task one. Um, so the picture that you guys see on this slide, it's a huge, huge farm. And there are several different colors um, in those fields. And hopefully we all realize that each color represents a different crop. Now, what ended up happening um, back in England was that these wealthy landowners, which are like the nobles, they went around and they bought up all of the small farms, which actually put the small farmers out of business. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But they bought up all the small farms and they combined them into large, large farms. And what they did is that they set up the fields with enclosures. So all they did was they took a fence and they enclosed the field. And within that field was a particular crop. And then they would do that to the next field, and the next field, and the next field, and so on. So they had a variety of crops that they were able to harvest and sell off, which eventually is going to make them more money. Um, as a result of this, unfortunately, I mentioned earlier, this put small farm owners out of business. They were basically pushed off of their land. And these farmers needed a place to go. They needed a job, they needed a new life. So eventually what ends up happening is that these farmers are going to move from the countryside to the cities. Because in the cities, you're gonna have new opportunities, you're gonna have new jobs. And these new jobs 
are going to be working in these factories. So another idea that has to do with um, the agricultural revolution is crop rotation. Now, guys, if you know nothing about um, harvesting crops or um, planting any sort of crop, um, hopefully we know that certain crops take certain nutrients out of the soil. Now, nutrients is what makes the plant or the crop grow. If you don't have nutrients in the soil, there's no chance of that crop growing. So what ended up happening is that farmers figured out that if they continue to plant the same crop in the same field year after year after year, it would deplete or suck out all the nutrients from that soil. Now, once nutrients are completely taken out of the soil, they're no longer able to be replenished, which means that soil is dead. Doesn't matter what you put in that soil, whatever seeds you water it, good weather, it's not going to grow. So they figured out that they would have to rotate the crops in fields every single year because certain crops take certain nutrients. So one year, if you look at my examples, farmers would plant wheat and wheat would take certain nutrients out of the soil. The next year in the same field, they would plant turnips and it would allow that field or that soil to replenish the nutrients that it lost the year before from the wheat crop. Now, year three, they would plant barley. Same idea. It would allow the soil to rest and replenish um, the nutrients that it lost for that particular crop. Now, I mentioned before that agriculture just doesn't have to do with food or crops. Um, it also has to do with animals. Animals plays a huge, huge part um, of agriculture and farming and farms. Um, so if you think of a cow, a cow can be used for multiple reasons. Um, they can be used for the meat, it can be used for cheese, milk, and so on. Um, so if you have a small cow, it's not going to produce as much milk, as much cheese, um, or as much meat. So farmers eventually started figuring out, and this is kind of, um, this is kind of common sense, but if you breed a strong cow with another strong cow, the offspring or the babies is going to be strong. And eventually that baby cow is going to grow up and it's going to be bigger than the normal cow. Um, it's almost like a super cow. So when it gets to uh, uh, the adult stage, it's going to be able to produce a lot of meat once it gets slaughtered, um, produce more milk. It's going to also produce more cheese. So it's really, really important that... Um, the farmers would breed strong animals with other strong animals. Um, so what ended up happening is that there's more food available. And if there's more food available, that means more people are eating. And if more people are eating, that means they're having a higher quality of life, which means they live longer, which means population also increases. And if you have more people living in a country, that means there's going to be a, a more demand for food, for goods, whatever it is. And if there's more demand for the food or goods, you're going to need people to manufacture or make or produce that food or goods, which means you're going to have lots of jobs opening up for people. So hopefully, um, you guys learned a lot with task number one and the agricultural revolution. Um, I'm briefly going over this. Uh, moving on to section number two, which has to do with England's advantages. And this definitely has to do with task two of your guys' web quest um, that we've been doing this week. Now, this is basically the reasons why the Industrial Revolution started in England. Um, now, looking at the map where... England is at on the map, they are in a perfect location. They are right in the middle. We should know by now that England is a large island. It's surrounded by water. 
um, which means there's lots of trade going on. Um, they have Europe around them. They have Africa around them. Um, they cross the Atlantic. They have North America. Um, so they are in an absolute perfect, perfect location. Um, so one reason why the Industrial Revolution will start in England is because England is full of natural resources. Now remember, natural resources are things that come from the earth. Um, so gold would be a natural resource. Coal, iron ore, um, anything that you have to dig up that comes from the ground is considered to be a natural resource. So a couple of natural resources that England has would be um, their geographic location, which I kind of mentioned in the previous uh, slide. Um, England has lots of ports and harbors. And I want you guys to think of a port or a harbor as like a parking lot for ships, for cargo ships. A ship's going to come in, they're going to pull in, they're going to park, they're going to load and unload goods, and then they're going to take off. And hundreds of ships would come into England and they would load and unload goods. So trading and business would occur on a daily basis in England. Um, that is why England was so rich. They did so much business, so much trade, and this allowed them to do it because they were had so many harbors, so many ports um, in their country. Now, besides harbors or ports, England also was filled with rivers. And it made traveling from place to place within England very easy. Now, not only are you going to be able to travel very easy by like a boat or a steamboat on a river, but you're also able to transport raw materials. You're able to transport goods from factory to factory um, or from the factory to the boat to be shipped out to different parts of the world. Um, so England was a perfect place because it had all of these um, natural resources. Um, so besides ports and harbors and rivers, um, England also was very rich with iron ore. Now, iron ore is a natural resource. It's something that people have to dig for. And uh, when people dig for something, that means um, they're considered to be a miner, which is a job that opens up for people. Um, so iron ore is used to make the metal iron and iron will be used for multiple purposes like making tools, like making machines later on, like making buildings. Um, another really important natural resource that England has is coal. Now coal is going to be used a little later on as fuel for new engines, these new steam engines. And they are going to dig for lots and lots of coal because they have lots and lots of machines that need the coal in order to make those machines go. Um, so once again, guys, this is going to op open up thousands and thousands of job opportunities um, for people in England. Um, now, I mentioned rivers before, but early on um, in the Industrial Revolution, factories would have to be built next to a source of water because the water is what made the machines inside the factory go. They were powered by hydraulic power. That's, that's water power. Now, eventually, as time goes on and they have these new inventions and they create these new steam engines, um, they're not going to need to build factories next to a water source anymore because they have the coal, they have the steam engines, which means factories can be built at this point anywhere, okay? Now, I've already mentioned that you're going to have lots and lots of people that are willing to work. Um, you're going to have lots of people um, that are making lots of money early on in the Industrial Revolution. England's very, very rich before the Industrial Revolution even started because of trade, because of business that they constantly did on a daily basis. And uh, what England did is they set up a banking system. And any person could go to a bank and they could get a loan. And that person could take that money from the loan and they could start a business if they wanted to. And this happened all of the time. 
And um, we should know by now that the way a bank makes money off of a person is that they charge a person interest. Um, so on both sides, the person is getting money and they start the new business. And then also the bank is making money off of the people because they're charging the person interest. Now, factors of production, guys, is a vocab word that you definitely need to know. Um, and England um, has all factors of production. So you need to know the three. It's land, it's labor, and it's capital. And England has all three. England has very, very rich land filled with natural resources, filled with harbors, filled with ports and rivers. Their land is really, really good. Its geographic location on a map is perfect. It's a perfect location for trade and business. Um, England also has a lot of people that live in their country and they provide the labor. There are lots of people that are willing to work, lots of job opportunities. And then of course, I've already mentioned, England has capital, they have money, they have wealth. They are very, very wealthy. They are definitely uh, one of Europe's powerhouses um, and they are a superpower in Europe. Now, hopefully when you guys get, and I'm not gonna spend too much time on the inventions because um, in one of your guys' tasks, it talks about all the different inventions and it has individual short videos on each invention. So I will briefly mention them in um, the next few slides. But these new inventions um, are going to target one industry. And this one industry is really the first industry to, to uh, be transformed during the Industrial Revolution. And this is the textile industry. Now, whenever I say textiles, guys, just think clothing, okay? Another word for textiles is clothing. Um, so the new inventions is really gonna help out with the manufacturing of clothing. So these new inventions are going to include things like the flying shuttle, the spinning jenny, the water frame, the spinning mule, and the power loom. Now, the one thing that you really need to know about these inventions is that it's going to make creating or manufacturing clothes a lot easier and quicker. Um, you're going to be able to make more clothes and you're going to do it in a short amount of time, which means you're going to eventually make a lot more money. You're no longer going to be making clothing by hand. Everything is going to be made by machines. Um, I'm not going to mention the cotton gin because you guys will watch a video on it. Hopefully you do remember um, from eighth grade history the importance of the cotton gin. Um, just briefly, guys, if you pick... Um, raw cotton from the plant um, and you open it up, cotton is filled with hundreds and hundreds of seeds. And before you take that raw cotton and spin it into a thread, you got to take all the seeds out. And that is very time consuming, um, taking out individual seeds from all the cotton. So what ended up happening in 1793 is you have a guy by the name of Eli Whitney and he invents the cotton gin. And this cotton gin is a machine where you throw all of the raw cotton on one side and then you crank a wheel around and around and around. And then out the other side, it takes out all the seeds and out comes clean cotton. And then you take that raw cotton and then you spin it into thread, which is used later on to make clothing. Um, so factories, I've already mentioned factories um, a few times, but of course a factory is just like a big building where you're going to put all your machines in and um, that's where you're going to manufacture all of your goods. Um, I've mentioned before that factories early on had to be built next to a water source um, because they would use hydraulic power, which means um, the water would uh, make the machines inside the factory go round and round and round and operate. But later on, with um, as time goes on and the Industrial Revolution um, goes on, um, they move away from hydraulic power because they have new inventions. They have new engines, like steam engines, which means they're going to need a new source of fuel. And we should know by now the source of fuel for steam engines is coal. And a coal is a natural resource that is used um, to make these steam engines go. Um, so... Now we know that factories could be built anywhere at this point. They don't need to be 
next to a source of water. So now you're going to have factories popping up all over the place. Finally, um, section number four, we are going to end with um, improvements in transportation. And of course, this is going to be for the, be before, excuse me, the car, the airplane, and so on. So I want you to think of the forms of transportation um, before those two inventions. Um, we have um, walking by foot. We have um, horse and wagon. We have animals. Um, we have boats or ships. And eventually with the steam engine, the invention of the steam engine, we're going to have steamboats. And a steamboat is just a boat with an engine and it goes faster. Um, and then obviously you guys can see in the top right picture, we have um, the steam engine locomotive. Now you're going to be able to travel by land a lot quicker. And these railroad carts are going to be able to hold a lot of cargo and a lot of goods and you're gonna be able to transport these goods from place to place within England very fast and very cheap. Um, and, and this is gonna make people a lot of money. Now, not only is it going to provide transportation, um, but it's also going to um, provide a lot of jobs. But um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We need to obviously talk about steam engines. We've talked about steam engines before, so this is just gonna be a quick review. Um, steam engines are going to replace water power machines and factories. Coal, which I mentioned before, is a natural resource. It's going to be used to, uh, or excuse me, it's going to burn to provide energy for the steam engines. Now factories, of course, can be built anywhere, not just next to a water source. Um, so we mentioned before that England is filled with lots of rivers. Um, but what ended up happening is that now factories can, can be built anywhere because of the steam engines. And if a factory is going to be built anywhere, um, sometimes the factory will not be next to a river. And that's going to provide or that's going to create a problem. If your factory is not next to a river or it's not next to a railroad, you're going to have to get your goods that you're manufacturing in your factory from one place to the other. And you got to figure out how you're going to transport that. And you got to do it in a cheap and quick way. So what ended up happening is that people started to build canals all throughout England. And all a canal is, is a man-made river. So if you didn't have a river next to your factory, well, you're going to build a river. You're going to dig, dig, dig. You're going to fill it up with water. And now you have a river. And once again, guys, this is going to provide lots and lots of jobs for people in England. Um, and of course, the transportation cost is going to decrease. You're going to be able to transport not only people, but goods from place to place very quickly, very easily, and very cheaply. So I just mentioned steamboats and canals equals easier, faster, and cheaper transportation. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, England is going to... Um, just make better roads all throughout England. So if you are traveling by foot or you're traveling by like horse and wagon, um, before they improved their roads, their roads were very bumpy, very rocky. So sometimes it made traveling um, very tough and it slowed down the time of travel. So what they ended up doing is they just uh, made smoother roads. They almost made uh, concrete roads. Um, besides making the roads, they also put drains in the roads. And and guys, if you know nothing about England and the climate and the weather in England, um, it rains quite a bit. Obviously, it's an island. It's right off the coast. So it, there's constant rain. Um, and when there's constant rain and there's no drains on a road, just think what happens. It ends up flooding. And if you have a flooded road, you can't get from one place to the other, which means now you can't transport your goods, which means you're going to lose out on money. So they were smart, they put in drains to the roads, and from there, um, they were able to constantly use all roads because they weren't flooded anymore. So of course, the result of this travel becomes easier and quicker. And finally, we are going to end with the steam engine locomotive. Um, this is the new way to, new cheap way, um, to transport materials, people, and finished goods by land. So if you're not going by ship, by river, by steamboat, 
um, you're now going to use a railroad. And this is going to provide hundreds of thousands of jobs for both railroad workers and miners. Um, you need people to build the tracks. You need people to build the rail or the locomotives. And of course, you need people to mine for the coal because the coal is like the gasoline for um, the railroads, for the, the locomotives. It's what makes their engine go. Um, so it's going to provide thousands and thousands of jobs for people, which is good. Um, and of course, guys, now you have a fast way to transport goods from one place to the other within England. Now, not only is it is it like clothing, but it can be agricultural goods. It could be food. It could be um, meat. It could be fish. And you're able to transport um, this food on a railroad very, very quick before, of course, it what? is spoils. Um, so this is very important. You can now transport food along with goods from place to place within England, fast, cheap, um, and you can do it in, in a very fast time so things don't spoil. And that is going to conclude our lecture. I'm going to go ahead and upload this on the haiku. So if you do need to go back for some reason, um, you guys will have